The other day, someone sent me a link to a video about fossil fuels not being fossil fuels, asking what this is all about. I clicked on it and it turned out to be Tucker Carlson interviewing a climate change denier. I've had a look. Since I found out the other day that my husband has never heard of Tucker Carlson, Tucker is a conservative American commentator who used to work for Fox News until... Well, until one day he didn't work for Fox News anymore. You see, even Fox News now admits that climate change is real, sometimes. So Tucker is now distributing his wisdom on his own, for example, on YouTube. In this video, he interviews Dr. Willie Soon, an astrophysicist who doesn't think that climate change is caused by humans. Why is it always physicists? The interview starts out with Dr. Soon explaining to Tucker that not all hydrocarbons come from fossils. Tucker thinks this is a big deal and is very surprised, or at least he's very good at pretending he's surprised. It's kind of incredible because all of us, and including myself until very recently, right. assumed that all of our main energy sources are these so-called fossil fuels. And of course, their existence is going to be limited by the amount of fossils, by the amount of decaying organic right. material. Not so. So if that's not so, then we need to rethink a lot of things. If we haven't been told the truth about where hydrocarbons come from, right. and we haven't, I mean, I've never met a single person in my life who said, wait mm -hmm. a second, they're not all fossil fuels, then we keep hearing there's a scientific consensus on climate change. Oh, Every scientist right. believes the same thing about it believes Al Gore and John Kerry. Maybe that's not true either. So what's this all about? Hydrocarbons are molecules that contain both hydrogen and carbon. It's the stuff that we burn to generate energy, methane, propane, oil, coal, and so on. We usually refer to those as fossil fuels because they come from fossils, dead plants mostly, that have been buried under sediments for a long time and created these molecules over millions of years. Under pressure. That said, hydrocarbons can of course be created in other ways. It isn't all that difficult, for example, to synthetically produce propane or kerosene, though that of course requires energy. Hydrocarbons are basically chemical energy storage, which is what makes them so useful. What Dr. Soon is going on about in the interview is that some hydrocarbons on Earth are produced by geological processes and not biological processes. These hydrocarbons are then called abiogenic. The abiogenic petroleum theory has it that the mantle of Earth actually has a lot of methane and oil that didn't come from fossils, but it's buried much deeper underground than that coming from fossils. Someone rediscovers this theory every couple of years, and every time that happens, people are surprised about it. Scientists are not particularly convinced by this idea. Yes, it is indeed possible to create hydrocarbons from some chemical reactions of water with rocks under sufficient pressure. The simpler the molecule is, the easier this can happen. The simplest abiogenic hydrocarbon is methane. But that said, there are various ways that we know the hydrocarbons that we've dug out of the ground are almost exclusively from fossils. First, there's the ratio of carbon isotopes. Plants preferentially take up the lighter of two carbon isotopes from the atmosphere. So if you measure the isotope ratio, you can find out whether the stuff came from dead plants. This is also how we know that most of the carbon dioxide we have added to the atmosphere came from fossil fuels. There are two other reasons we know that most oil and gas comes from fossils. One is their composition. They're usually mixtures of different hydrocarbons with some impurities. You expect that from fossils, you don't expect this from abiogenic processes. And then there are the locations where we find them. That's in places where plants sunk into the ground and rotted away. Taken together, there's little doubt that most hydrocarbons that we've dug up so far 
come from fossils. There are some exceptions to this. For example, there are pockets of methane below the ocean beds. Some of these, geologists believe, were formed by chemical reactions with rocks at high pressure. But it's the exception rather than the rule. None of this means that there couldn't be many more abiogenic hydrocarbons deeper down in Earth. This is, I think, why this idea appeals to a lot of people, because it would mean that peak oil is way off. And also, there's a lot of money to be made. But the fact is that no one has found these supposed abiogenic petroleum deposits. And if finding them takes a lot of deep drilling, then, you know, why not just use geothermal energy instead of oil? Dr. Soon seems to have forgotten to mention these additional details in his explanation to Tucker Carlson. The interview then continues as follows. So why why don't most people know this? Why do most people think that the, the gasoline in their car was by definition have to be limited, yeah. 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 That there's a, that there's just a tiny amount and it's it's going away. We'll never oh, find the, more. The world is full of untruth and half truths, right? That's the whole problem, right? So after feeding Tucker Carlson a lot of half truths about abiogenic hydrocarbons, he complains about half truths and concludes that climate change is a hoax. What's that, brother? This video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. The video's titled, This is what they don't want you to know about the climate agenda. But the question of whether fossil fuels are really from fossils doesn't really matter to their impact on the climate. That's because where light absorption is concerned, carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide. Actually, if a lot of the hydrocarbons that we have already burned were abiogenic in origin, which they are not, that it'd be worse. Because if they come from fossils, then we know that all this carbon dioxide was already in the atmosphere previously, and at least some forms of life survived that. If that wasn't the case, God knows what's to come. The brief summary is that, yes, hydrocarbons in the Earth's crust can come from other sources than fossils, in which case they're called abiogenic. We've known this for half a century. However, the hydrocarbons that we've dug up so far almost all come from fossils. We can tell from their isotope ratio, composition and location. Whether there are more abiogenic hydrocarbons deeper down is unclear, but if there are, it would be a very good idea to leave them there. Dr. Soon then dishes up some old school denier arguments like the it's all natural variability idea. But that other factors, the orbits, plus the changes of the sun by itself, between how bright, how, how dim it is, these two factors can explain just about everything that we know all the data that I have. No, we know that the current temperature increase does not come from changes in solar energy, because that would warm up both the surface of our planet as well as the upper atmosphere. Whereas warming caused by an increase in carbon dioxide warms the surface but cools the upper atmosphere. And the upper atmosphere has indeed been cooling. I'm pretty sure that Dr. Sue knows that. He probably just expects that Carson doesn't know it. It's another classical denier move. Soon then goes on to complain about how climate scientists reacted to the opening statement from Al Jaba at the COP meeting earlier this year. I mean, in the beginning of this COP28 meeting, the chairman or this guy from UAE, United Arab Emirates, the chairman, I don't know his name, Sultan Al Jaba or Jaba or something. He was saying that there's no scientific uh, reasoning to say that we should face up fossil fuels. He's right. But then he backed off because of all this. <laughs> Everybody's in a hurt mentality. Everybody's doing the <laughs> mad thing. Unfortunately, on this, Dr. Soon is entirely right. There's no science behind a fossil fuel phase out because the problem isn't fossil fuel. The problem is climate change caused primarily by carbon dioxide and to a lesser extent methane in the atmosphere. Of course, the primary source of that is currently fossil fuels. But if the fossil fuel industry can find a way to avoid carbon dioxide emissions, which is a pretty big if, then that would solve the problem. Now, as I've said previously, I don't believe that this is actually going to happen for various reasons, but that's another story. The story here is that Al Jaba's statement was entirely correct. 
The problem isn't fossil fuels per se. The problem is climate change and we shouldn't lose the goal out of sight. What's happened, however, is that a lot of climate scientists have declared the fossil fuel industry an enemy. This isn't about science anymore. It's a political movement that's conflating science with politics. I made a video about this earlier this year. And of course, my comments were full of people claiming I get paid by the fossil fuel industry. It's a classical ad hominem attack directed at me not the substance of what I say. They, it's actually worse than that. So let me tell you something I only found out after I published the video in January. In that video, I was quoting a climate scientist at the University of Oxford. His name is Miles Allen. I don't know him personally, but he's the guy who coined the term net zero and who launched the idea of extreme event attribution. So in my earlier video, I had a quote from him that I took from a UK website called the Science Media Center. They collect quotes from scientists on topics of current interest and make them available to journalists. It's actually a really good idea. The quote from Alan that I found there was, it's depressing to see the climate establishment reacting so furiously to a perfectly accurate statement by the COP28 president. To limit warming even close to 1.5 degrees, we must both scale down the use of fossil fuels and scale up safe and permanent carbon dioxide disposal. It's simply not true that to stop global warming, we have to stop using fossil fuels. What we have to do is stop dumping the carbon dioxide they generate into the atmosphere. I use that quote because it's exactly what I was thinking, but he's a climate scientist and I'm not. So I thought it'd be good to have a quote from someone, you know, who's a little more suit and tie than pink shirt and fuzzy hair. But when I went back to the website to take a screenshot, the quote was gone. This all happened while the COP meeting was still going on. I later learned from people who don't want to be quoted that several climate scientists gave Alan a hard time about that quote and he decided to withdraw it. I don't know whether this is true, but it sounds plausible enough, doesn't it? In hindsight, I feel somewhat sorry for drawing attention to the quote even after I saw that it had disappeared. But really, this isn't about Eleanor El Jaba. It's just a vivid example that illustrates that the community of climate scientists is trying to enforce a narrative that they want their members to play along with. I'm not a climate scientist. I don't give a shit what they want me to say. And this is why you see so many complaints in my comments. People who accuse me of being funded by the fossil fuel industry every time I say something that doesn't agree with their narrative. I'm still waiting for my office paper. More seriously, this is a huge problem that a group develops and enforces a narrative that they require loyal members to conform to is one of the most obvious symptoms of groupthink. And the climate change community is very deep into this. It's bad for one thing because it discourages criticism and increases the risk of mistakes. It's also bad because people who are not in the group, like Dr. Soon and me, notice it which creates a backlash. Why is it always physicists? So here's Sabina to climate scientists. Stop censoring your own people. And the rest of you, please check out my Patreon so I can continue to complain about Tucker Carlson. I don't like to waste my time, so I'm constantly looking for ways to learn more efficiently, not just faster, but also so that I remember it better. I've recently begun using this app called Imprint, and that has worked very well for me. Imprint has a lot of content on personal development, productivity, science and technology. So it's exactly what I'm interested in. Like, for example, this overview course on artificial intelligence and superintelligence. Imprint breaks down even complex topics into their essentials with easy to understand summaries and visuals. And at the end of each chapter, it prompts you with a question to help you remember the content. Calling it an app is not a good way to put it really. It's more a modern learning method. It helps you make a habit of discovering new content and collecting useful information. 
For example, this course on how to resolve conflict, I found that to be really useful to structure my thoughts and address problems more consciously. I also really love the graphic design. It makes me want to hire the designer. And yes, of course, I have a special offer. The first 200 of you to subscribe will get a free trial and 20% off an annual subscription. All you have to do is scan the QR code or use my link imprintapp.com slash Sabina. So stop scrolling through endless feeds and make smarter use of your time with Imprint. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.